Hey everybody, welcome back. Monday morning briefing, episode number 65. It's March the 9th, and uh, we missed our Monday video last week. We just had a lot of stuff going on. We've been working on the course, we've been working on the project video, and we also turned out a video last week on tying these tassel knots. And so if you haven't seen that, you wanna go back and check that out. But I just created a video to kind of show you how I figured out how to tie these uh, through the book that we referenced in that video. So check that out. These are really cool tassel knots uh, that can be used on a lot of different things. We used to build a lot of heads stalls and uh, reins are still very popular where at the bit ends we would use these as the closure and they just kind of look fancy um, look kind of cowboy so they're pretty cool uh, that's what we did last week like I said just been working a lot on on video and stuff shooting stuff and I just didn't have time last week we had a few visitors in and stuff and I just didn't have time to get the Monday video done but we're back this week um, we've also put I think last week I put some more on there as well for the gun slings both the thumb hole as well as the shaped we put some more of those on the website i also cut a bunch more yesterday and put them on the website as of the time of shooting this video here there is a bunch of them on the website so if you've been wanting some of those um, check that out uh, go you can go on there and grab those if you go to the website and they are sold out and you're you've been wanting the material pack or a few of these to build yourself some gunslings then you can always call the shop and i can write you a ticket and we can order uh you know cut them up and send them straight to you before they hit the website that i'm cutting as many as i can but we're just kind of being careful i think we've got another leather shipment coming pretty soon and so hopefully we'll be able to get a lot more on there but they've been really popular i want to thank everybody that's been buying those and hopefully you're having fun with those we're still kind of dialing in the thickness on them i think the like i said around the five to seven ounce is about perfect for that and that way you can um, you can line them and then you they're not super super heavy um, I might also start cutting some at some point just the full 9 10 ounce and then you could use those I would think as a single ply gunsling um, if you chose to I prefer to make them lined I think they just they look a lot more finished out or whatever but you could definitely go with a 9 10 ounce which would be I think substantial enough to hold hold your uh, you know a decent sized rifle and stuff like that so those might work out really well uh, we'll see if we can get some of those cut extra and get those on the website but well, we've been having a lot of fun with the course. I've been shooting a bunch of that and creating all the materials that go along with that. I think it's gonna be pretty neat. Again, this course that's coming up, that'll be the second course on the Academy, will be a floral tooling course. So we'll actually go through all of the tools, the swivel knives, sharpening those, um, the, the, the process that I use as I'm tooling, like what tools I use when, and kind of how I go through that and tooling a complete uh, floral pattern. So that's gonna, I think it's gonna be, it'll be kind of like our mini tooling series. That was kind of our test run when we were doing the mini tooling series a couple of years ago. And um, it'll be similar to that, but a lot more in depth. So we'll talk more about technique and different tools, different ways to use those tools, things of that nature. So I think it's gonna be really good. The cool thing that I wanna show you in this Monday video is I wanna show you my lighting. You may see that back behind me. Um, you may have, if you follow us on Instagram, you may have seen in our stories, we posted a couple pictures of that. But I think I finally figured out a good lighting situation and it all came about with doing the videos here for you guys because I ended up, I got I got some comments and some, some critiques on our videos as far as like adding more light. It was some of the stuff was a little bit dark to see. And so we've been trying to improve those parts of the video for quite some time. And I finally got some lights that I I like using I had some before but they were just really cumbersome and didn't didn't work as well so I often didn't use them but now I found these here that the producer of the podcast actually turned me on to and I got those ordered and they actually I tried them at the tooling bench and they worked great there um, I just kind of tried them one day just set them up beside the bench and shine down on there and they lit up the bench perfectly I think it's the best lighting option that I found for my tooling bench it is pricey so it's not the cheapest route to go but this may give you some idea of just kind of what I'm after and then that may help you kind of find the lights that work best for you um, a lot of people will use the desk lamps you know that, that mount to the side of the desk and then they, they gooseneck over those work out really well I haven't found any that lit up as well as this does but I also don't like things clamped to the bench because if sometimes I've got big products on there that I'm tooling like a saddle seat or something and when you're moving that around I don't like hitting those lights and they're in the way but anyway let me take you over here and I'm gonna show you the, the bracket and the lighting that I have and you can kind of check that out I may give you some ideas for your tooling bench. Okay, so one of the problems that I had was in this corner trying to light this tooling bench is that I really don't have a light straight above me. There's a big fluorescent light over there uh, above the workbench, but there's not one over here. And so this corner just kind of casts a lot of shadows. We did build this uh, 
this little shelf and I put a light up underneath there, but it's too far ahead of where I'm sitting. Um, and so what we wanted to do is try to get some light here. I did buy a couple, like I said, desk lamps that kind of gooseneck up, but they just weren't bright enough. It didn't have quite enough light to really light up this area. So what I did was I went ahead and tried our studio lights that we had purchased for shooting video. And they're a newer brand, N-E-E-W-E-R. So N-E-E-W-E-R. And um, th they're just a, a nice studio light. They come uh, the ones I bought came two to a pack or two to a kit and it had tripods and everything and those are the lights that I'm using here as we're shooting the video but what I did was I tried them right here as I was tooling and just kind of had them kind of pointed down towards my tooling bench and they lit up really really well the light itself um, has a dimmer on it so you can dim the light down or up however bright you want it also has a color uh, adjustment too so you can go for a more warm light or a more yellow light whichever one or cool or warm whatever you want to do there um, you can kind of adjust that I do like the dimming aspect of it they also can you, you can operate them with batteries that's a separate deal you can purchase those we did purchase those for some of these so we can move them around the shop without having to plug them in but when I had them here I noticed how well they lit up and I wanted to try to get a couple more just so that I'm not using, because there's sometimes when I need to use these for other purpose, I want to I want to have something that's here that's permanent for the tooling uh, bench. But I didn't want them on a stand because they get knocked over, they get bumped, whatever they're in my way. And so what I wanted to do was I was looking at building maybe a bracket or something. But what I found was these brackets here, and as you can see, the bracket itself mounts to the wall, so you can mount that however you want to. It swivels from side to side completely it also go up and down so it's got a lever here and you can adjust that and pull it up or pull it down however you want to do it wherever you need to get it adjusted it's got a turn deal here where you can actually mount the light to the end um, you so what I didn't use the tripods when I bought this kit but um, it comes with them anyway I don't know if you can buy these by themselves or not but yeah, so I can swivel that I can also turn here and telescope in or out if you want to come in there and get get out of the way or something like that or move it a different position i can do that so they're very very versatile um i think these these brackets themselves i think were maybe a hundred bucks a piece maybe 50 a piece. i can't remember exactly what i paid for the brackets i got them on amazon they're a, they are a newer brand as well so they're they're made for these lights which they're all pretty much interchangeable so you may find a cheaper bracket that might work or maybe even build your own bracket for a different type of light but the main thing i wanted to show you as like I said, I'm, the goal of tooling is usually to have your light just behind your shoulders and then kind of coming down from an elevated position there so that it casts down because when you're tooling, your hands are covering your work and so that's gonna end up causing shadow and that's the thing that we fight all the time. It's not necessarily the shadow on the bench, it's the shadow under your hands that's really hard to get away from so that you can see what you're doing. And if you don't take care of that early or you just kind of deal with it, you can cause the excess eye strain over time. It can really start affecting your eyes. Um, so we want to be sure and, and have it lit up properly. There's a ton of different ways to do lighting in a tooling bench, and you may have it already figured out. Your bench is lit up just right. You can also put it by a window, whatever. That's great. I just wanted to show you the option that I found for a corner set bench that doesn't have access to a window and is not very bright, and we were fighting shadow all the time. This seems to have taken care of that situation. And one neat thing is, I usually gotta unplug it because the cord is not quite long enough, but with this bracket, is if I wanna do something over here and this light's in my way, I can raise it up and it's completely out of the way. So I won't bump my head on it or anything like that. Um, and it stays up there. It's also handy because if we wanna light up a certain area of the shop um, over here, we can do that so if i'm working if i'm working on a saddle or something and i want to light up that area for making a video or something we can do that as well so these these brackets are really versatile may not be very useful in your shop um, depending on what you're doing with them stuff like that but i just wanted to kind of show you what we finally found for the tulum bench because um, we've talked about it before in the past that i'm just having some trouble kind of lighting this area and i think i finally got a system that's going to work out really well and so, like I said, they are expensive. Um, I think these, the light kit itself with two lights and tripods were, was like $200. And then the brackets, like I said, they were either 50 or hundred bucks a piece. So all in all, it's a considerable investment. But like I said, if you're, if you're having trouble, I, you know, you may not want to go all in on something like that, but at least you can get an idea 
of kind of what I'm after, which is to get those lights back here. And again, I prefer them not mounted on the bench because you end up hitting them with things that are in your way, um, that kind of deal. So if you are kind of handy and you like to tinker and stuff like that, you could probably make a bracket very similar to that, mount one of those desk, la desk mount lights on there somehow, and then get that same effect to where we're up off the bench. We can put the position of the light just where we want it. And then when we're done, we can move them out of the way and you can do other things over here without having the lights in your way. So we've also been busy on saddles in the shop the last couple of weeks, uh, just really trying to play catch up. We've been a little bit behind on our saddles and trying to get make a little catch up there. We just got a lot of things going on. So we've got one uh, fixing to be wrapped up. We're gonna put oil on this one today and it should be done in the next few days. And then we've got three more here that we've started. We put the ground seat in. Um, we showed some of that on our Instagram and we've showed a little bit of this here and there um, in the past. A lot of people have asked if I do a ground seat video. I may do that one of those in the future but the deal with ground seats is everybody has their own way of doing it and everybody has um, their their own thing they want to see in it but i may do one just kind of show you what i do um, for for instance i'm working on a fiberglass tree if you're doing a, a rawhide tree rawhide covered tree you're going to do your ground seat a little bit different because you've had you have to add your tin strainer things like that um, but like I said, we might try to work that in there. As we said earlier this year, we are going to try working a few more saddle videos um, into our channel, but that's not going to be the bulk of what we do. But I will try to maybe look at doing that at some point. Right now, I'm just trying to get caught up on them, trying to move some of these forward so we can get them done because we are running a little bit late on some of these. Um, luckily, we've got a fantastic customer base that is just patient. And so they're excited and they want their saddles, but we got to they got to try to get them get them caught up and so we can get get kind of where we need to be on our list but as far as Lost Trade Podcast, if you haven't uh, checked out the episode that came out a couple of weeks ago, that was with Wade Oliver Wilson. He's an engraver, uh, gun engraver specifically, master engraver up there around Fort Worth. Really good episode. We had a lot of good feedback on that. Um, he seemed to like the episode, so we're always happy about that. Um, and we do have one coming out this week. So today is Wednesday. It, it should come out tomorrow. It'll be a good episode. Um, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, I think you'll recognize the name, especially if you're saddle makers, like we mentioned before. But we're excited to see that episode come out like we talked about before we are going to uh post a podcast every other week so every other week on thursday we'll have a podcast episode come out that's our goal if we don't have one coming out for whatever reason then we'll sure sure let you know we do have a lot of people scheduled and we're doing quite a few interviews so we can kind of get ahead of ourselves like we talked about last week so we're working on that but i appreciate everybody that's been listening to the podcast and sending us some feedback i've had a lot of people send me suggestions for uh potential interviews and stuff we are putting those in a folder so that we have them and hopefully eventually we'll get to some of your suggestions as well but if you haven't checked out the podcast yet you can listen to it on apple or spotify and you just go on there and search lost trade and you'll find it and we've got 20 some odd episodes in there i think we're fixing to cross over 30 episodes here pretty soon so there's a lot of content on there a lot of great craftsmen on there that you can listen to and uh, kind of hear their story and and where they came from and how they got to doing what they're doing so but that's about all i got for you this week guys i really appreciate it if you haven't already go to dg saddlery.com and sign up for the leathercraft newsletter and we'll see you next week in the monday morning briefing